Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. Today I have here a very quick video and I hope you, you enjoyed this one. Uh, I, I'm going to talk mainly about anti-squats and I'm going to show you a real example about this bike. Why? This bike is from a friend, he did a crazy modification in the bike. So he basically did a, a single speed conversion with a, a no-made chain tensioner and he replaced the original uh, crankset with an Amher Schmidt one. And in this video I'm going to show you how this modification affected the kinematics of the bike, in particular the anti-squat characteristics, meaning the pedaling characteristics. So, for those who don't know, the Hammer Schmidt is a quite old school now uh, crankset. It's a two speed crankset and it gives you a gear range of 22 uh, 36. So it's a pretty interesting concept. Uh, despite that, the chain always run in this uh, sprocket, which is a 22 in this case, but in some cases can be a 24. So, I did the simulation of the, the original bike with the, the 36T uh, crankset and basically the anti-squat of, of this combination is around 120% which is a pretty common value uh, for many bikes especially uh, enduro and trail, and trail bikes. Now, I did the same analysis but simulating the, the Hammer Schmidt with a 22 uh, sprocket and the result uh, it was ast astonishing so you got here uh, 220% of anti-squats at the sag zone okay so which is a lot so I'm going to show you in a moment a real video of the bike pedaling to show you what type of consequences this has. Nevertheless, for those who are not familiar with the anti-squat concept, uh, I recommended you to watch my previous video from 2016. The link is on the description. Nevertheless, I will briefly resume what is the anti-squat. Okay, so the anti-squat is an easy concept. Basically, uh, when you are in a vehicle that accelerates forward, uh, your weight has the tendency to move backwards, okay? And this, uh, this weight transfer or this load transfer to the back wheels will cause uh, a squat of the rear suspension, okay? So this squat force is dependent on the acceleration. The anti-squat is basically a characteristic of the linkage of the suspension, okay? An intrinsic pro property of the suspension that counteracts these squat forces, okay? So when you get a good balance of anti-squat, you completely eliminate uh, these squatting forces. This is an example of a car with low anti-squats, okay? So when the car accelerates, the rear suspension almost uh, bottom out, okay? So it compresses a lot. But indeed, by changing the linkage of the suspension, you can tune the amount of anti-squats that the, the linkage provides. So in the first example, when you have very low anti-squat forces, like 0% or 20% or 30%, the end result of the acceleration is that the rear suspension squats, okay? When you have anti-squats near 100%, this cancels out the squat forces and what happens when you accelerate is that the suspension neither extends neither compresses okay so it stays it stays the same and when you have huge anti-squats like 150 percent or 200 percent what happens during the acceleration is that actually the rear suspension lifts okay it extends uh, so this is what happens so, and in this case, you have a huge anti-squat, 220%. So, this basically means that the anti-squat forces are the double 
of the squat forces. Okay, so you have huge anti squats, and in theory, what happens with this bike is when you accelerate, basically the the suspension extends. It moves in this direction. The shock extends. Okay, it extends, and the bike will lift up. So this is what happens in theory. Now I'm going to show you a video about what happens in the reality. And this is what happens. This is me on top of the bike accelerating. And if you look closely, when I accelerate, when I pedal, uh, the rear suspension extends and the bike lifts. Okay, Look at the saddle for instance. The saddle lifts. This is another example. Again, the rear suspension extends, the saddle lifts, and in this case the, the fork also lifts because of the weight transferring backwards. Okay, so the bike as a whole lifts. <laughs> okay, again, this is my friend pedaling on his bike, and you can see exactly the same. Okay, so during the pedal strike, the bike lifts, the rear suspension extends. Okay, so I hope you could saw that on the video. Indeed, on top of the bike, you can very easily uh, feel that, that sensation when you pedal, the bike lifts. It's very obvious, the anti-squat is too high. And this uh, video basically sh proves that very high anti-squats are not good, okay? The anti-squats need to be balanced with the, the squat forces because when you have too high anti-squats you end up also uh, with pedal bob. In a bike with um, low anti-squats and low pedaling efficiency what happens is that when you hit the pedals, okay, for each pedal stroke uh, the suspension actually compresses because the your weight is moving backwards and the anti-squat is low so the final result is that the, the suspension squats and it compresses causing the pedal bob but in the example of my friend everything is still the same but since the anti-squat is so high the suspension actually extends from the sag to to the top out okay so in both scenarios, with low anti-squats or very high anti-squats, the suspension oscillates and produces this bob movement. Okay, So at the end of the day, you still end up with a low pedaling efficient bike. And that's because ultimately what matters is the amount of the oscillations uh, in the suspension during the pedaling. For each oscillation, you are basically uh, wasting energy from your legs. Okay guys, so I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something new about, about this. I would also want to thank you for all of you that requested my services, riders, uh, magazines, and uh, bike companies. So that's really important uh, for me and to keep this, this channel alive. And uh, if you want to buy a new bike soon, and if you are interested to have a checkup of the kinematics before purchasing the bike, just drop me a message on the, my website. Okay guys, that's it for today. Stay safe and I see you next time. Bye!